March 22nd, 9.14pm, Gatewater Hotel, Corridor's Hotel Room. It's past 9pm already, isn't it? I wonder. I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mystic Maya. These things take time. I'd say probably not. The police are professionals, Pearls. They'll find her, so don't you worry. Phoenix, ACAP. You know this, ACAP. You, you've been, like, wrongfully arrested three times by now. If we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. You're right. So, so the real person who killed Mr. Corridor was that assassin, Mr. Shelley the Killer, right? And the card Miss Andrews found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. But if that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who was the one that hired the killer to begin with? Who was his client? You mean, who asked for the murder? That person didn't want to dirty their own hands in blood. But whoever this client is, they're still a killer. Who... who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Miss Andrews? I wonder... But if she was the client, then why go through the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? It's a good question. But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then... No, it can't be. Matt Ongard himself? If Mr. Ongard really did hire the assassin, then he is not innocent at all. Far from it, he would be guilty of the crime. But, but it can't be Mr. Ongard, right? I mean, when we first talked with him. Mr. Ongard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Corridor? Alright, just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Corridor, okay? I didn't see any psyche locks at that time. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Um, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pearl? Juan had bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. It looked like somehow Juan had his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Mr. Ongard's secret? W what is this secret? I don't know yet. But for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Corridor was going to reveal this secret. That means... Mr. Ongard had plenty of motive to have... Plenty of motive to have Mr. Corridor silenced. Which means we have to meet with Mr. Ongard. There's no way around it now. You can probably see where this is going. Ah. Uh... Anyway, let's head out into the hallway. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel. Hallway. Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9pm already. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. It's still the matter of this secret Mr. Corridor held about Mr. Ongard. And Miss Andrew's real intentions. These are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention centre? Hmm. I'm sure we'll think of something, pals. Don't you worry. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. Hey, wait! What is it, whippersnapper? All I know is nothing has anything to, is nothing that has anything to do with you is ever good. Like just now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. And I was told to use it to search the whole hotel. That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? The one Gumshoe made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. 
the request came from Edgy Pierce, so... Edge was? And he said... If you feel angry, direct your anger at that unsophisticated young lawyer. Oops, not young lawyer. That unsophisticated lawyer. So I'm gonna feel free to direct all my anger towards you. Ugh. Gee, thanks a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are. <laughs> this is absolutely top secret, too. Better keep it to yourselves. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the presents. Hmm, very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know, it was to catch poor Juan in the middle of a scandalous meeting. Scandalous? What's that? It means, well, you know, th that gossip that's been going around about my dear Juan. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? But I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Corridor. I'll let you in another secret, youngin. I know who planted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious puppy hair photographer girl, the nerve of some people. Spying on people by herself, as if I wouldn't want to see it for myself too. <laughs> Wow, the alien actually admitted her true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet that it's nothing good. I didn't say anything. So you want to know about Juan and that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, they were something of a refreshing pair, those two. Oh? I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. That manager? Who are you talking about? You don't know? That manager woman Juan had. It's a shame she killed herself, though. <gasps> oh, you're talking about Miss Celeste Impax. Miss Andrew's mentor, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. That's Celeste girl. She was supposed to get married, you know. M married? You mean, to Mr. Corridor? <sighs> really, you young kids today don't know anything, do you? That girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. Three days after their marriage announcement? What in the... <gasps> Why would Miss Impacts want to kill herself? She was going to get married. Well, that's because she was thrown away, you see, by Juan. What? B but they were going to get married, right? They promised each other, right? They held a grand announcement session, but three days later, Juan suddenly cancelled their marriage. Uh, is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. But, but why? Why did he do that? That was not in the magazines, unfortunately. I see. That night after Juan called off the wedding, that manager, Celeste, killed herself. How terrible. I wonder what happened between those two. So yeah, we need to look into Celeste's situation a bit more to solve this case. Which can, could be a little triggering, so stay, stay safe. Um, March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel. Hotel lobby. On that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people here. R really? There's only like... 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... There's only like 50 seats there. <laughs> hmm, I guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. Looks like things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. Uh, we need to go to the detention center, but we need permission to go there. So we're going to go to criminal affairs and hopefully get permission. March 22nd, police station, criminal affairs department. It feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. You're Mr. On God's lawyer, right? Uh, yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we've been looking for. A real decisive witness. A decisive witness? You mean for the On Guard case? We're taking the witness's statement right now. Gotta hand it to Mr. Edgeworth. What's Edgeworth up to now? Who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. M Mr. Nick? Between the kidnapper's demand and now this, I can't see any way to win here. Oh, yeah. 
Mr. Edgeworth wanted me to tell you something. Edith? Even though visiting hours are long over at the detention centre, he wanted to grant you special me to grant you special permission, so there you go. What? I've already called them, so they know. Go on, go talk to your heart's content. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Mr. Nick. Go talk to your heart's content? It sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. March 22nd, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. Ongard and Miss Andrews are in this detention center. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Uh, let's start with Adrian's, because I love her. There she is. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry to be visiting at such a late hour, but there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was Matt. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. She can't be clueless about this secret Mr. Corridor had on Mr. Ongard. I'd like to ask you about Miss Matt Ongard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Ongard. If that's the case, then why did you become his manager? And why would you become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. About Miss Celeste Impacts, I had finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. I... I'm sorry. Yes, I was shocked by her suicide. And it's true that when I heard the rumour that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back, and to burn it. You wanted to burn it? But why? I didn't want it to spread just like just another piece of gossip. But I never held any murderous intent towards Schwan. I would never do something so stupid. The suicide note, huh? I wonder what it said. Why did you try to frame Mr. Ongard? That's simple, because he's the killer, that's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? I mean, a cab, but the way you did it was pretty cool, so I'm okay with that. But there had to be another way. The police are excellent at doing their job. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> so they'd figure it out, right? Yes, they're so good they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Oh, Adrian, I like you. <laughs> Miss Andrews. Well, um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason, so please, tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh? Did you say something just now? Oh, <gasps> Psyche Lock. A Psyche Lock, huh? Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. But... I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrews say... Revenge. Okay, we can't break that Psyche Lock yet. We need more information. So we're gonna head... to the Criminal Affairs Department again. March 22nd, Police Station. Criminal Affairs Department. Oh, uh, who is this? Is it Gumshoe? Mr. Wright, please, you have to help me. Uh-oh. Oh, it's Mr. Powers. M Mr. Powers. What happened? Why are you here? Uh, I, uh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. What? And now I'm going to testify at tomorrow's trial. So the decisive witness is Mr. Powers? I was talking with a detective until a little while ago, and I was on my way home. And all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest, and I was brought back here. Uh, oh. They said my face and whole self in general looked suspicious or something. Hmm. Well, I guess I can see how they thought you looked suspicious. 
I'm just a normal guy on an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? Well, no, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. So, about this testimony you're giving, what are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet. But it sounds like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. You saw something important? What was it? Uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, and especially not that lawyer, he said. Who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? I'm gonna take a wild guess and say it's me. Y yeah you got it. Mr. Nick. Mystic Myra and myself are your only two allies in the whole world, but it's alright. Ouch. I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? This is gonna do a lot of damage to Matt, you know? Because he's got that refreshing like a spring breeze image going. But what is he really like? Well, let's see. Matt's always been kind of a player with women. He would never really turn a pretty face away, if you know what I mean. He'd always say, it's just a game to justify himself. Gross. What? That, how horrible. That's unforgivable. Ow. S sorry, didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said once that there's only one person in the world who won't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over you? His friend it, you know. Miss Adrian Andrews. Well, she's gay, so that makes sense, but there's more than one gay woman in the world. Yeah. So, I mean... <laughs> Why is Mr. Powers suddenly looking kind of energetic? Ah, you see, I'm actually a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities in their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? A uh, dazzling sort of image? But aren't you a part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see. But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip about what are the other stars around me as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, hey, so did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrew's mentor and her suicide? You mean Miss Impacts? We heard something about her, how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it a little the other day, about that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright, why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Mr. Powers is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. Hey, so have you heard this? Celeste left a suicide note. And they say that Juan went and hit it. We heard about that in court today. But there wasn't any actual proof that she left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Something bad for Mr. Corridor? Why do you figure so? Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, It looks like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. A truly insidious man? Did she mean Mr. Corridor by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. Well, that's some good info, thank you. Y you're welcome. Mr. Ongard and Miss Andrews, they're both at the detention centre right now. There are still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. I have to get the two of them to tell me everything. Okay, we're gonna go back. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? We're gonna talk to Matt now, because we haven't yet. There he is. Dude, it's Mr. Wright. I hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you. I... I hope so too. Edgeworth just dropped a bombshell on me by saying... That Juan Corridor was killed by an assassin. And that the assassin's client is... This man, Matt Ongard. What's wrong? Mr. Ongard. There is something I must know with 100% certainty. Hmm, you seem kind of different. You're totally not like your usual lawyer dude self. Did you notice that when, like, the... It faded to black around Mr. Ongard, it worked properly, whereas when a Psyche Lock does that, it cuts off the bottom of the sprite while it's fading? 
I'm not sure why that's like that. You'd think they'd be consistent. They'd have like one routine for fading the, the, the top layer to black and making it work properly, but apparently they don't, so it's weird. Anyway, um, about the press conference. You mean the one where Juan was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai? Yeah, I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. It looked like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Could you please fill me in on what this secret is, please? Uh-oh. I knew this was coming. Mr. Nick, d don't tell me. Psyche locks. You said a secret, right? I don't have any idea what it is. Do you, dude? Did you know about Mr. Corridor and Miss Andrew's relationship? Well, it's all over the tabloids, dude. Ah, oh, but I don't know any of the details, if that's what you mean. Look, how many times have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did with his life. Miss Andrews. She had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Corridor. Her mentor was Mr. Corridor's manager. And Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste Impact's suicide note from him. Celeste. Does that jog any memories? Dude, I suddenly just got totally hungry. You up for a pizza? My treat. Um, Mr. Nick? What's a pizza? Is it a kind of pea? Like green peas? Let's go eat one later, okay? Ugh, I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. That's too bad. Well, how about we get our minds off this topic and talk about something else, okay? So you did the fade properly again. <sighs> Mr. On Guard, are you connected to Miss Impact's suicide in some way? Okay, we don't have enough evidence to break his psychalog either, so we need to walk around a bit more and find some more clues. Mr. Nick, your phone! Hey, that's the still Samurai theme song, isn't it? I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. It sounds kind of ominous. Y yeah, I know. Hello? We're in trouble now, pal. I'll... I'll be back at the office really soon. Well, what's wrong? Something really unexpected just happened. Mr. Edgeworth, he... Edgeworth? Anyway, hurry up and get back to the office, pal. I don't know what's going on anymore. It's no good. The end. I... Beep. Hello? He got cut off. W what's going on, Mr. Nick? Don't you say we need to go back to the office right away? Th then we should hurry back. I'm scared to go back. What are you talking about? Mr. Nick, pull yourself together! Um... Maybe it'll be good news. Somehow I doubt that. March 22nd, Wright & Co. Law Offices. What took you so long, pal? Mr. Edgeworth couldn't stick around forever and had to go. Well, what happened? We got him! We know who bought that spy camera. Huh? D this quickly? And this bear's what gave them away, pal. The bear. I figured it out, pal. I figured we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Um, but wasn't it Mr. Edgeworth that figured... Shh, pearls. And? Go on. There's only one person who bought one of those bears who related to this crime. Who is it? Who would be so rude to spy another person in their room? Matt on guard. Huh? Matt on guard, your client. That's who, pal. And here I thought things couldn't get any worse. Yep, Matt was the one who bought the spy camera. Are you sure you heard right that the person who bought this bear was... I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. This is the credit card receipt for the purchase. It's for $3,800, pal. That's an exact match to the price of that stuffed bear. A receipt? That's all you have? Nah, it's not just the receipt, pal. The store clerk said so himself. He told me, I'm sure I sold the bear to Mr. Ongard. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ongard's autograph out of it, pal. 
So I'm sure the person that bought the stuff there was Mr. Ongard himself. My... my side is failing me. This, this can't be. Credit card was added to the court record. So what about the spy camera we found? Ah, uh, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can give these back to you for you to file away into evidence. Spy camera, transmitter, and stuff there refiled into the court record. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought. I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Corridor's room was Matt Ongard. Why, why would Mr. Ongard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Corridor in one of their rendezvous. I bet is not good enough for me. I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to see him? Mr. Ongard, I mean. Yes. I'm... I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder... I wonder what we'll find out next. I'm scared myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. Mad Ongard, what in the world have you done? Okay, yeah, we're gonna head back and talk to Matt now, because we have all the evidence we need. I believe. Uh, you're working really late, you know. It's already past 10pm, dude. I think it's time you told me the truth. Relax, don't you know that ignorance is bliss? If you really want to know, let's talk. Take that! Take that! See, I don't get why the, the Psyche locks don't show the bottom part of the sprite properly when it's fading out, but everything else does. It's weird. Matt's secret. Now, let's see what the secret of yours is. What if Mr. Corridor had been successful in his plan? What would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Wright, I can keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but... I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on, I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Corridor, especially on that night. Spy camera! Someone used this camera to secretly film Mr. Corridor's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? and then sent the images the camera took with this transmitter. Wow, but dude, where was this camera you're talking about hidden? In a bear. <laughs> the spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. Hmm. I guess Schwan had a few of those kinds of fans too, huh dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm, you sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Corridor was... It was you, Mr. Ongard. Mr. Ongard, don't you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I ever met Mr. Bear before, dude. Oh, but he says he knows you! How could you forget such a great friend? What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. Ongard. If I didn't know how you work in court, I think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? You're just pulling my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? Here is proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. Um, I mean, I have proof that he bought the bear, but I don't have proof that he put the camera in it. But I think the credit card receipt counts. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Ongard. It's from when you bought that stuffed bear. Dude, all you can tell from this is that I spent $3,800. I go to that department store all the time, okay? This $3,800, this could be the toothbrush I bought that one time. Uh, a $3,800 toothbrush? It's ivory. And it's got elephant hair for bristles. Yeah, Elephant hair? Is that what rich people use nowadays? Yeah, rich people are gross. Eat them. Or... Fertiliser them. I don't know. Mulch them. <laughs> anyway. 
The store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. Um, so can I ask you one thing? Yes? You're my lawyer, right dude? So, if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. I haven't asked why you set the camera up yet. And what your secret is. Of course, it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you going to do now? I'm going to find out what I want to know, because I must. The reason you hid this camera into Corridor's room and filmed it in secret is... Uh, it's, it's because of the murder, but I'm not sure which piece of evidence I'm supposed to present. I think it's the murder photograph? No, that was wrong. Mr. Ongard? Dude, how about you take that bear home with you and talk to it? I'm sure Mr. Bear will talk with you about as much as I will, which is not at all. Um... So, is it time to throw in the towel yet, dude? Sorry, but no. Uh, fast forward. Um, so it wasn't the crime photo. Is it the tabloid? I don't, I don't think it's the tabloid. Hmm... Maybe it's the, the card? Yeah, it's the card. What is this card? Maybe he doesn't know about this card. This is a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly DeKiller. And I'm sure you know of him, don't you? Sh Shelly DeKiller. Th th that's ridiculous. Why would I know some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Um... This is it. I'm finally starting to get to the truth. I can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Matt Ongard, I know why you know Mr. The Killer. It's because you're his client. Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So, how? How would you know something like that? It's because you're his client, that's why. You hired Shelly DeKiller to assassinate Mr. Juan Corridor. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is... You, Matt on guard. <sighs> and here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought anyway. Hm. Mr. On guard? You really did hire? Hold on a sec. I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Consult... myself? Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? I think it's time for you to meet him now, Mr. Lawyer Dude. How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm Matt on guard. Oh my god. <laughs> well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really- so you are Shelley the Killer's client? You didn't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, did you? Well, what do you mean? And that woman? Adrian was quite brave herself. Trying to stick the crime on me? I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? That's... you're lying! What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on, and let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you hide the video camera and... A weakling soon believes the words of others, just like that pathetic Adrian. You knew about Miss Andrew's secret? But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone, least of all assassins. 
What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding a sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me? How much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And, and that's why? Yes, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail Kim if I want. That's right, that video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up, and I can. Good enough of an answer for you, little girl? Why? Why would you kill Mr. Corridor? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Corridor had been able to give it, then Mr. Ongard's secret would have... Oh well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know? I had no interest in doing it, really, but bit by bit, it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's... that's how Mr. Corridor ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face and people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. Oh, and how can I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone all working their butts off for me, Matt on guard. Aw, oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Corridor. And you answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey now, I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that Dekiller guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. You, you, you killed Mr. Corridor. Ha ha ha, I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Grrr. Oh, but too bad, you can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Oh, but you can't, can you? That would be the one thing you absolutely can't do. M Mystic Maya! You wouldn't want to test a killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. Y you scoundrel. So if I were you, Mr. Wright, Esquire, I think I would give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. I... I'll get you for this. That's such a cliché phrase. Sean said something just like that, if memory serves. Of course. Well, we all know how well things turned out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Maya. Maya, what am I supposed to do? And now... Now you finally found it. Oh, it's Edgeworth, the starting line of this case. Edgeworth? I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. Okay, let me just put this on hold for a second to complain about something. Apparently the reason that the Psyche locks didn't show up when Matt, you know, told us that he didn't kill anyone is that he wasn't technically lying because he hired an assassin. But the thing is, the Magatama is not a lie detector. The Magatama detects when someone has a secret hidden in their heart and makes the psyche locks appear accordingly to indicate that they're hiding something. Which means that the, the psyche locks should have appeared when Matt said that he hadn't killed anyone because he was still hiding a secret, which is that he hired an assassin to kill someone. It, it doesn't make sense. Like, the previous parts of this game have established the way the Megatama works is, is not based on if they tell a lie, then they then the locks appear. It's if they're hiding a secret in their hearts. Therefore, it should have made a psycho look appear on Matt, but it didn't. And that bothers me. Anyway. Uh, we're just gonna continue with the case now, but yeah, that just, it just doesn't make sense. 
Um, I know they needed to make you think Matt was innocent for the twist to work, but it's, it's very contrived. Um, it's, it's contrived. Anyway, uh, March 22nd, police station, criminal affairs department. Well, right, what are you gonna do if you plan on changing your strategy? N no we can't do that. That's right, he's holding Maya hostage. What, what should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. M Mr. Edgeworth. Right, only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly really understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. My turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer, and you must find it on your own. I'm a lawyer. But to fight for someone who is clearly a killer. Matt Ongard. That man is really... Ugh. Doesn't matter who, every person deserves a proper defence and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Proper defence? But what exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? <sighs> Ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you fought your clients up until now? Uh... Well, that may be true, but... But that's... That's because I believed my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get on guard and acquittal, that... that isn't a proper defence at all. I became a lawyer because I thought... I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do. Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. You want to save someone? That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? Th that's You are a defense attorney. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. People like you and Franziska von Karma are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict, for a man I clearly know to be guilty. Franziska. She fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect, perfect win record. That's all. And? Isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? It was so petty. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you're mistaken. What are you... Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realise the error of my ways. I realised that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. What? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then, why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you will find out on your own. I have faith you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you'll be powerless to change the ending of this story. Beep, beep, beep. M Mr. Nick, the transceiver! I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Now then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain a an acquittal tomorrow? My, my. What is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me, please. Why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. Ongard's sake? Why are you- why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me. A man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you are asking me for a reason as to why I am doing what I am. Y yeah 
This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck is aftercare? Ooh. Phoenix, you should probably know that already. My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called client relations, and it is a part of an assassin's duty. An assassin's duty? We were unlucky this time, and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney, and to ensure that you would do everything in your power to the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before, however. You did, but my name is Dekilla. Shelly Dekilla. You're Shelly Dekilla? Please keep in mind you do not have much space to manoeuvre with me. As a Dekilla, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain... M Maya! It would be my duty as an assassin to see to it she receives a nice long nap. Uh, no! Now then, if you'll excuse me. If someone were to trace the signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Meow. Bip. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! I... I don't know what to say. Edgeworth! Hmm? Did you hear that? At the end of that transmission? Meow. Huh? Oh, that. It sounded like a cat. A cat? It can't be. That cat, can it? What is it? I think- I think I know where Shelly the Killer is hi holding Maya hostage. Maya hostage. Edgeworth, have all police units head for On Guard Mansion immediately. Alright, you hurry over as well then. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Y yeah! I need to go to the hotel to get there. That's very silly. There we go. March 22nd, On Guard Mansion, Living Room. Maya! Please answer us! Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. Assuming he's still in the area. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was to kill us. He and Ongar were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan, contingency plan ahead of time. Well, I can see a bear. Oh, it's a figurine of a bear. But there are a lot of cups in it for some reason. Figurine added to the court record. A bear? Isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Corridor? Why would something like this be here? Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed here. Ah, oh, I'm sure that's the shoe. Do you think that this came through that little door? Mm, this door. It's locked. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking doors down by now. Let's go, Edgeworth. Slam. Slam. Crash. Ugh, there's no one here. From the looks of this room, I would say this is On Guard's private lounge. Look at this, right? An antennae? It's sending and receiving radio signals in the VCR. That should be antenna. Antennae is plural. Check inside the deck. If there's a tape, it would be an important piece of evidence. God, this is so dated. If we're lucky, I'll have the moment the crime was committed recorded on it. I'm sorry, but the tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No. But there's no mistake that someone used this to record something. It looks like someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. We searched all over, but it looks like he got away. I'm sorry. It looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now, we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to you to be her pillar. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route leading out of this district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. This looks like a picture of Miss Impacts. 
with love, Celeste. Miss Impax? You mean... Yes, Mr. Corridor's former manager. Why would a picture of Miss Impax be here in Mr. Ongard's mansion? And why does it say, with love? Hmm, this might be a clue. Celeste's photo added to the court record. Ah! What's wrong, Pearls? But please let me see that picture frame! Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back! There's something written on the back of the frame! Maya! It's Mystic Maya! She left us a message! Oh, what? I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you. Ever. I'm fine, so you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot, a lot of time left. Pearly, you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's got to watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now, Nick. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. That's... I... No! <laughs> Mystic Maya! <laughs> right. What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, um, nothing. We've searched the house, and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes? As far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm gonna get. But I'm still short one last thing. And what is that? Miss Andrew's Psyche Lock. If I could just find out what secret she's holding, then I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow. Blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention centre. Um, thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, pals. It's time to open that last lock. March 22nd, detention centre, visitor's room. Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I have come to remove your psyche lock. Psyche lock? I want to know, and you will tell me. Your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me, if you can. Why frame him? Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Ongard for the murder? I've already told you countless times. It's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. Ongard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said, revenge. So you're saying I was taking my revenge out on Matt, and that's why? What an absurd idea. <laughs> I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by being dependent on other people. There is something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. It's Celeste. It's obviously Celeste. She loves Celeste. Take that! C Celeste! There is only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings. Love. And even revenge. And that is Miss Impax's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Schwann's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Schwann. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. But for you to hate Mr. Ongard, it would mean that he must have had some relation to Miss Impacts and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? Well, um, we have this photograph now, which says, With Love, Celeste on it, and it belongs to Matt, which suggests something. This. This is a photo of Miss Impax, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. With Love, Celeste. This is Miss Impax's handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? N no, that's alright. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ongard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. <laughs> so 
Celeste. She was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Corridor didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. B because of Mr. Ongard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste, she was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at the time. I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why, with love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple, weren't they? Oh, they were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible. Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him, even happier than when she was in with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then, it was suddenly called off. On the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste, she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and for myself. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see, so that's what happened. But, but why did Mr. Corrid have to call off the wedding? I don't understand it all. But it's probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impacts. That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds, and... So that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then, when Juan discovered, Juan discovered her body, he hid her note. But why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realised that note was a powerful weapon against Matt, and it would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case, with his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge. There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was... At the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it, because I heard it all from Juan. It was so I could find out about all this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night, when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another, after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was gonna burn it, I had even brought a lighter. But, I couldn't find the suicide note. And that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters. So when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that... man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with Maya's situation, or with what I know now. To be continued. 
and with that we more or less know everything. <laughs> so yeah, Adrian is completely innocent, she is not the killer, and I love her, and she deserves so much better. And she's so precious, and she's in love with Celeste. And Matt's going down. Not just yet though, next time. See you later. Bye!